Next up will be 3 Nephi chapter 15. And now it came to pass that when Jesus had ended these sayings, he cast his eyes round about on the multitude, and said unto them, Behold, ye have heard the things which I taught before I ascended to my Father. Therefore, whoso remembereth the sayings of mine, and doeth them, him will I raise up at the last day. And it came to pass that when Jesus had said these words, he perceived that there were some among them who marveled, and wondered what he would concerning the law of Moses, for they understood not the saying that old things had passed away, and that all things had become new. All right, so over the last three chapters, that uh, Jesus has shared some teachings with the people. Um, it's the part that corresponds to the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, so now he's finished that. So at the beginning of chapter 15, it says, Now it came to pass when Jesus ended these sayings, which was the last three chapters worth. He, he, he looks around, right, and says, Now you, you've heard the things which I taught to the, the people before I ascended to my Father. In other words, he's saying, I've, I've given this, this talk before. Right? I, I gave it to the people in Jerusalem before I ascended to my Father during the time I was uh, doing my, my ministry there. So now you've, you've heard the same teachings that, that they had, and so now it's up to you to pay attention to what I've said and, and do the things which I said. As it says in the end of verse 1, who, so remember these things of mine and do with them, him will I raise up at the last day. In other words, you, you, you get eternal life. So the, these are ways that uh, you can serve God and put yourself in position to inherit eternal life. Now, having said that, now he's uh, ready to move on to other topics. And so in verse 2, it says that uh, you know, he says he perceived that, that some of them were confused about, about some things. And right? in particular, it says that he, they were wondering about the, the words that were said about the, the law of Moses. Because as you see at the end of verse 2, it says, For they understood not the saying that old things have passed away and that all things have become new. Right now, we've, uh, we've touched upon this a couple times. Right? And so it was, it's, but uh, you know, I guess they had heard the words, but they didn't understand what that meant. Right? What do you mean old, everything's become new? And what do you mean the law of Moses is, is passed away or, or is fulfilled? Or, you know, it, it, it wasn't necessarily that obvious or that clear to them what that meant. So he'll try to explain that a little bit now. And he said unto them, Marvel not that I said unto you that old things have passed away, and that all things have become new. Behold, I say unto you that the law is fulfilled that was given unto Moses. Behold, I am he that gave the law, and I am he who covenanted with my people Israel. Therefore the law in me is fulfilled. For I have come to fulfill the law, therefore it hath an end. Alright, so he's starting to explain to them what, what this is about, about the idea of the law being fulfilled and old things becoming new. So that's why he says uh, in 3, it says, Marvel not that I said that I said this, that old things pass away and old things become new, right? Because it's, it's things that have been said all along. So you really shouldn't be surprised that this is the case. And uh, so it says, 4, it says, I say unto the law is fulfilled that was given unto Moses, right? Because I am he that, that gave the law, and I, I'm the one who made the covenant of Israel, that therefore in me it's, it's fulfilled. Of course, him being part of, of of God, so that God was the one who gave the law to uh, to Israel, which was the the law of Moses, and so it says that therefore he would be the one to to fulfill it, All right? So he said that he came to fulfill the law by him giving his life on the cross. He was the, the, the last sacrifice. He um, paid for people's sins for 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 all time, so that there was no longer a need for let's say sacrificing animals. Um, a lot of the things that were done. You know, to atone for sin no longer necessary because Jesus gave, gave the atonement for sin. All right? So that's, that's what he's saying. He said, I, I gave the law so I can fulfill the law. So that, that's what he wants them to understand. This is the, the part about there being something new and that the old was, was done away with. The law of Moses was given to, to Israel, all right, to the house of Israel. So that, that's really what it was about. I mean, and. Uh, so, I mean, at this time, he's still dealing with the people of Israel, but later on, it would then move on to the, to the Gentiles. The gospel would be given to the Gentiles, and they, that they were never under the law of Moses in the first place. So that's another reason why it had to be something new, because it had to be something that would apply to everybody. See, the law of Moses never, never applied to the, to the Gentiles, right? It was only given to Israel. So now the gospel of Jesus Christ was going to be for the whole world, so therefore it had to be something new. Behold, I do not destroy the prophets, for as many as have not been fulfilled in me, verily I say unto you, shall all be fulfilled. 
And because I said unto you that old things have passed away, I do not destroy that which hath been spoken concerning things which are to come. For behold, the covenant which I have made with my people is not all fulfilled, but the law which was given unto Moses hath an end in me. See, Jesus is making a distinction here, all right, because as we mentioned the, earlier that the law of Moses was associated with the Old Testament, all right, but that's not all that was in the Old Testament. I mean, that was part of what was in the Old Testament. It also included a lot of prophecies that the different prophets gave out. And, and, and although many of those prophecies did uh, talk about Jesus coming and, and what happened with Jesus, so those were fulfilled at this time, but there's plenty of other prophecies that, that were not fulfilled yet. And there's some of the prophecies that still aren't fulfilled today, right? Because there's prophecies of, of let's say, a, a gathering of Israel in the future of a, of a, a city called Zion, right? These are things still in the future. So a lot of the prophecies in the Old Testament are still, are still open. So that's why he's making sure they understand. I mean, don't just take the whole Old Testament and throw it away, right? Because there's still, still things in there that we need to know about because they haven't happened yet. So he says, I, I, I don't destroy the prophets for it. there's many that, that have, have not been fulfilled in me, all right? But anything that's not been fulfilled in me, it will happen, just it hasn't happened yet, all right? So you must understand that. Don't, don't take the whole book and throw it away, right? Because there's information in there that you still want to want to know about, all right? So he says, that, that's not what I, what I meant when I said that old, old things have passed away. All right? I'm just talking about the things that I've fulfilled or, or, or done now, so you don't have to worry about that because... Those prophecies have come to pass, but there's still plenty more that, that happened. Right? So, uh, but he's just talking mainly about the law of Moses at this point, saying in 8, so the covenant which I made with my people is not all fulfilled, but the law of Moses which was given has an end in me, because the law of Moses is no longer needed, because I've come and uh, been crucified and resurrected. Behold, I am the law and the light. Look unto me, and endure to the end, and ye shall live. For unto him that endureth to the end will I give eternal life. Behold, I have given unto you the commandments, therefore keep my commandments. And this is the law and the prophets, for they truly testified of me. Jesus is talking about the, the law of Moses, right? So now he's saying that instead of thinking of the law of Moses, consider, consider me as the law, right? And not that he's really the law per se, but he's taking the place of the, the law of Moses, so that by what he did, that that fulfilled the, the law of Moses. So that's why he says, I'm the law and, and the light, the light of the world, as we've talked about before. So he's saying, that, that's who I am, so therefore, therefore look unto me. And look unto me and endure to the end, and, and you get e eternal life. Right? And uh, the, the endure to the end uh, part is, you know, is, is kind of important. Endure to the end means endure to the end of your life. Right? That it's not just what you do today, and that's it, and, that, and now I go back to where I was before. You, you stay in the family of God, you can keep serving God for your entire life. And so when, whenever anybody gives your life to the, to the Lord, mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that should be their goal, right? No matter how young or old they may be, right? Even if they're, you know, 16 years old, right? Still it would be with the intention of I'm going to endure to the end. You know, even if that end may be another, you know, 70 years away, but they're going to endure to the end. Obviously, somebody who's older maybe has less time to the end, but the point is that no matter what age you are, you're, the intention is to endure to the end. So it says if, if you do that, you, you receive eternal life, right? And, and so now he's saying now, now you have my commandments, which is mainly my two commandments, so this covers the law and the prophets, so you keep my commandments, and then you're, you're going in the right direction. If the, the Spirit of the Lord is in you, I mean, at, at what point would you want to walk away from that then, say that the Spirit of the Lord's in you, then you should be wanting to be part of the family of God your whole life. So, I mean, I, I suppose it could be said, if you receive the, the Spirit of the Lord, you're, you're baptized and you receive the Holy Ghost, and, and you just stick with that, I mean, you're, you're, you're going to serve God the rest of your life. And so, I mean, in, at that point, you are saved, but if you, you still have the chance to walk away from it, is, is the point. And so that's what, what we caution people, is that we don't want people to take that for granted and say, oh, no, no matter what I do, I can do whatever I want in my life, and it doesn't, doesn't matter. Well, then you, you're already thinking wrong. You're already not thinking with the Spirit of God. You're, you're thinking with, with your human side that says, I can get away with stuff, right? And that's not, that's not of God. You, if, if you're thinking with the Holy Ghost, you should be looking for the good things to do to serve God, not, not what can I get away with and still, still get the prize. So I think if, you're, if you are truly converted, you are truly a servant of God, you're, you're going to endure to the end, and then you're going to be saved. 
So, so, so from that point, you could say, yes, as of now, I'm saved, but this is my intention to serve God the rest of my life, but don't fool yourself into thinking that you can get away with something or walk away from it and it's still the same. No, you want to do it for the rest of your life. And now it came to pass that when Jesus had spoken these words, he said unto those twelve whom he had chosen, Ye are my disciples, and ye are a light unto this people, who are a remnant of the house of Joseph. And behold, this is the land of your inheritance, and the Father hath given it unto you. Having spoken about the law of Moses being fulfilled, it says now when Jesus spoke those words and to everybody, now he's going to address the, the twelve who he picked out, the twelve who are going to be the basically the ministers or the, you know, the, the, also by the, name of the disciples. They were going to be the baptizers. Or I remember a few chapters ago he picked out 12 to do that. So now he's going to speak to these 12. It says that in 12 it says, you, you, you're my disciples and I'm a light to this people who are a remnant of the house of Joseph. The house of Joseph would be just another way of saying the descendants of Joseph and the remnant of those, those who were left. So because many were killed, you know, in all the destruction that, uh, that happened, right? So who's left now is who he's talking to. These are the remnant of the house of Joseph, or the, what's left of the descendants of Joseph. So he's saying these are the people that you're responsible for, the descendants of Joseph. We sometimes call them the, well, the seed of Joseph is another term that we use for the same thing. Right? And, uh, and of course, to today, the, the seed of Joseph, or the house of Joseph, would be the, the, the natives of the Americas, or today's seed of Joseph. All right, so he says that you, you 12 are my disciples, so it's, you're, you're going to be the leaders of these people that are descendants of Joseph, so you've got to take care of them all right, and uh, point them in the right direction. And the 13, it says, this is going to be the land of your inheritance that the Father has given unto you. And you know, what, what that means is, see, the original family, Lehi and his family, right, they, they had uh, land in Jerusalem, which was referred to as the land of their inheritance. And, and every family had a, a land of their inheritance. It was something that their family would own, and they would pass it on to their children and, and their children. And in some cases, maybe they would you know, divide it up and give some to the different children. But it was a very uh, important thing, the land of your inheritance, because most would keep it in their families for, their, for generations. And so now he's saying, well, you left behind the land of your inheritance. So this is the land of your inheritance now, the land of, of the Americas, where you all come and since nobody else here, God has given it to you. This was what they call the land of promise, but in this case it's called the land of your inheritance. This is going to be your land, and it's going to be in your family, if you will, for many generations to come. And not at any time hath the Father given me commandment that I should tell it unto your brethren at Jerusalem. Neither at any time hath the Father given me commandment that I should tell unto them concerning the other tribes of the house of Israel, whom the Father hath led away out of the land. This much did the Father command me that I should tell unto them, that other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. All right, so as he's addressing these people who he's saying are a remnant of the house of Joseph, right, now he's going to touch on the, the other tribes or the other uh, descendants of, of Israel that came from the other families or, or it's also called tribes. Right? And, and so he says in 14, when he was in Jerusalem, he, did, he didn't mention to them about the descendants of Joseph and the, the Americas. Right? He's telling them right here, I, I, the, God didn't tell me to tell the little people about you. And, and the reason that's kind of important is because it's not in the Bible. Right? See, so if somebody says, well, how come in, in the Bible it doesn't mention about these people? Well, he's saying right here, God didn't tell me to tell them, so I didn't tell them about you here. So therefore... None of my words there would have reflected the existence of this group right here in this land, right? And, and furthermore, in 15, it says, he also didn't tell me to tell them about any other, any other tribes, right? Because really, there was only one tribe that was represented at that time in Jerusalem, which was the tribe of Judah, otherwise known as the Jews. So he was speaking to them, but he didn't say, you know what? There's descendants of Joseph in the Americas, there's descendants of the other tribes and maybe other lands or islands or wherever. So he didn't tell them anything, but he just spoke to them about themselves. So he says, God didn't tell me to tell them, so I didn't. I didn't tell them about anybody else. Just let them worry about themselves. All right? But in, in 16, it says that uh, he, God told me to tell them just this, right? And, and so he, which is what's in 17. It says, the other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they'll, they'll hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. And now, 
Did, did, did Jesus tell the people in Jerusalem that? If we were to open to John chapter 10, verse 16, it would say exactly that, right? Because he, he did say exactly that to them, right? And, and so in John chapter 10, those words are recorded, right? But, but they were confused uh, about what it meant, right? They, see, they, they, they didn't even know what he was talking about, right? Because he says, the other sheep I have which are not in the fold, I have to go talk to them too. And when he, so he's saying, when I said that, I was talking about you and any other tribes that I would go visit, right? But they, they didn't necessarily get that. And in fact, when people read it today, they, they think it just means that he's going to go like to the Gentiles, let's say, or even, but, but that's, that's not what he's saying here. He's saying that it, he was referring to the other parts of the house of Israel. So that when he said that in John chapter 10, that's what it meant. And so we get to know what it meant because it says right here that that's what it meant. And then, of course, the, the goal, as you can see there at the end of 17, is that, is that the, the, there'll be one fold and one shepherd. So in other words, everybody would be together as the, the people of God, and they would have the one shepherd, which would be Jesus. And now, because of stiff-neckedness and unbelief, they understood not my word. Therefore I was commanded to say no more of the Father concerning this thing unto them. But verily I say unto you, that the Father hath commanded me, and I tell it unto you, that ye were separated from among them because of their iniquity. Therefore it is because of their iniquity that they know not of you. And verily I say unto you again, that the other tribes hath the Father separated from them, and it is because of their iniquity that they know not of them. Once Jesus tells them that I made the statement to them, but there's other sheep that are not of this fold, and I go, must, I have to go visit them. In 18 it says, because of stiff-neckedness stiff and unbelief, they didn't know what I was talking about, right? So they didn't understand that. So therefore God said, don't, don't even bother to tell them anymore, right? Because they're not even getting this, this basic uh, point. So they go through and say, well, Joseph is over there, and Reuben is over there, and Simeon is over there, right? It's, it's just beyond that, all right? They, they're not really going to get it. So that's why like, when he made that one statement, they didn't understand it. So that's, that, that's enough. You made the one statement. It's going to be recorded in the Bible. So that, that's really all that needs to be said right now, right? But in, in, in 19, it says that, there's, that the reason that the descendants of Joseph were separated from those in Jerusalem, the Jews, right, there was a reason for that. As you can see, the reason in 19 is because of their iniquity. And the beginning of the Book of Mormon records that because it says that Lehi was preaching and was a prophet, and the people wanted to kill him. Right? They wanted to put him to death. So therefore, God warned him or commanded him to take his family and, and leave. And they went to the wilderness and eventually wound up here. So it was because of the uh, iniquity of the people there that the descendants of Joseph found themselves on, on this land. And, and so that's why it says, it's, so therefore, it's because of their iniquity that they don't know you. It's, it's not that they, they did anything wrong by running away. It's not that uh, it was just something that just happened. It was because of their iniquity. So because of their iniquity, you're separated from them, and because of their iniquity, they, they don't know who you are or know where you are. And furthermore, in 20, the same for all the other tribes, right? That, that also the other tribes who were separated from those in Jerusalem were separated because of the iniquity of the people in Jerusalem. So they also don't know about them because of their iniquity. So in other words, it's, it's all their fault. So don't, don't feel sorry for them if they don't know what's going on. It was their own fault that uh, they came about that way. And verily I say unto you, that ye are they of whom I said, other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. And they understood me not, for they supposed it had been the Gentiles. But they understood not that the Gentiles should be converted through their preaching. And they understood me not that I said they shall hear my voice, and they understood me not that the Gentiles should not at any time hear my voice, that I should not manifest myself unto them, save it were by the Holy Ghost. But behold, ye have both heard my voice, and seen me, and ye are my sheep, and ye are numbered among those whom the Father hath given me. So here he's just finishing the explanation of what he was talking about when he said, the other sheep I have which are not of this fold. In 21 it says, you are they of whom I said, other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Okay, so when I said that there, in John chapter 10, verse 16, I was talking about you. All right, so you're the ones that I was talking about. Now, in, in 22, it says that they didn't know what I was talking about. They didn't understand. So they, they thought it was the, the, was the Gentiles. But it couldn't be the Gentiles. In 22, it says that the intention was not for Jesus to go visit the Gentiles, but rather for the house of Israel to preach to the Gentiles. So that, uh, and that's the way it worked, right? It's after Jesus 
ascended to heaven, that uh, the Apostle Paul and others went and preached the gospel to the Gentiles, and, that, and that's how they heard it. So the, the, the Jesus didn't go visit the Gentiles, he only visited the house of Israel, and then Israel turned around and preached the gospel to the Gentiles. Right? And further in 23, it says that they understood not that they, they'll hear, hear my voice, Israel, but the Gentiles won't hear my voice, it says, except through the, the Holy Ghost. Right? So it was never intended that Jesus would go preach to the, to the, the Gentiles. He only came for Israel, he, he shared the gospel with Israel, and then they turned around and, and shared it out with the rest of the world. Right? So that's, that was the, the, the plan all along. So that's why it says in 24, it says, but you, you in this case, at the seat of Joseph, part of the house of Israel, you both heard, heard my voice and seen me, right? So you're the sheep I'm talking about, and, and you're numbered among those who the Father had gave me, because he was sent for Israel to start with, so that was the original fold, and then later on it was expanded out to include all the Gentile people as well. Right? So... He's just trying to make them understand what, what he was talking about here. And again, this is good information for us to understand what he meant in terms of other sheep I have which are not of this fold, but we're going to have one fold and one shepherd. Right? And so he was at that time talking about Israel because he was going to go visit all the tribes of Israel, which leads us to believe that he made other stops in addition to, to right here, right? because if he visited the seat of Joseph here, well, he most likely visited other tribes and other places and and. Presumably they would have recorded in their own records, which we've never seen. So it's reasonable to assume that there were other visits made, but it was only to the people of Israel. That was the only one he was going to visit. The, he didn't go visit Gentiles because it was going to be Israel's job to bring the gospel to the Gentiles.